Howdy folks, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, trying to reverse engineer parts on a CNC machine using a touch probe and uh, some of the approaches you may use depending on what you're trying to reverse engineer. So here I've got a, a casting, it's a 3D object, um, it's got a surface with uh, texture and relief and it's basically a 3D part. Your best option usually for something like this is truly just a, a point cloud where your touch probe is just going to incrementally go over and map out the entire surface, take sampling the surface over a real tight um, grid, if you will. Um, so a, a point cloud is good for something like this. Um, it can take a long time. You know, you're Something like this, if you want to use something like a 10 or a 20 thou step over, you may wind up with half a million points you're going to sample off this. And then after you've got that done, you've got to take that point cloud data and turn it into a mesh surface so you can convert it into an STL or do something useful with it later in the computer. Uh, other objects like this, this is just truly a 2D profile part. Um, Probit is, is good at working with stuff like this too. Um, you know, you can do a 2D trace of the outline fairly easily and uh, get a lot of data dumped into a DXF pretty quick. Again, you're not going to wind up with a file you can go and cut directly. You're going to wind up getting data that you have to take into a CAD CAM program, do some cleanup work, and uh, create your, your final geometry that you can then do tool pathing off of. But again, 2D stuff like this is real easy. And you know, especially symmetry type things like this, you know, you can only need to probe half the profile, probe half the holes, and mirror it in CAD, and you can can get it quickly without taking a lot of data. And I've had people ask me, you know, what if I want to do something like a guitar neck or a guitar body? Um, I unfortunately don't play instruments, so I don't have a guitar laying around, but I do have a, a spatula that looks kind of like a guitar neck, if you will. So something like this is kind of a mix of, you know, it's got a 3D surface, it's got a 2D profile shape, and, you know, how would you approach doing something like this? So I think today we'll talk about coming up with a strategy of how you would want to um, record data off of this and uh, probe with a probit um, with UCNC and collect the data and then we'll go and take the data into CAD, probably like Fusion 360 and see how you work with it and create something useful. So the, the most important thing will be coming up with a strategy, right? So it's probit can do a 2D profile trace and it can do it both in the XY plane and it can do it in XZ and YZ. Um, so you can construct, I'll say, profiles in many locations that you can then use to create surfaces. Um, again, you're not going to get, you know, measuring with, with the probe tool. You're going to get some data and, and you're going to get, you know, you're going to sample data every 50 or 100 thou. And it's, it'll be too coarse to want to be able to create geometry directly, but it'll give you something that you can then um, smooth out and create a proper surface or a 3D body in CAD that then you toolpath off of. So uh, again, let's come up with a strategy of how we would attack this with Probit. Probably, you know, we'll put it on the table, align it to the Y axis or to the X axis in my case, and then uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably want to create profiles every so often in the XZ plane and then do a profile in the XY and, and take that data and see what we can do with it. So that'll be a, what we're up to today. Now we'll go over to the computer and set up for probing. All right, we're over at the machine. We've just fired up UCCNC and I've homed it. And I've got uh, the part we want to trace mounted to the table over here. Um, first thing we'll want to do is set up uh, an origin. Um, my strategy will be to come around this area here and center up on the handle 
Um, that'll be my y origin because my y direction is in this direction. And x, I'm going to put the origin right here, and this is positive x. And so I'll use these features to set up my origin. So I'll just jog the machine into location. First thing I'll do is I'll set the surface of the table to be zero. Um, so in this box here, I tell it I want Z surface to be zero. I'm going to go ahead and probe to set Z. And it's touched off the table surface. Um, when we get probing profiles, I'm not going to want Z set though. So I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want it to read zero all the time. When I do like an XY perimeter, I want it to record the actual Z height I'm at. Next thing I will do is come over here roughly to the center of the handle. And we're going to do a, a ridge probing here in the Y direction. Um, so I'll set a clearance of one inch here and a Z depth. We'll want to go down about 0 0.3 inches because the handle's probably about three quarters of an inch in diameter. So that'll get me down about halfway. And if I come over here, I want zero mode on. And then I'm going to probe that feature. And I've got these windows set to be always on top, which I see is a problem for the message boxes. I'll have to slide this out of the way. So this is just a warning saying it's turning off the recording mode while it does a zero. And what did I do? I think I messed up the height. Yes, I did. That should have been a negative 0.3. I'm going to recenter back over here. All right, so now I'm going to zero in the y direction in this location. I've set a depth. I'm just going to run this. There, and now we've gone and we've centered up such that we have y equals to zero right at the center line of the handle. And now I'm going to jog all the way over to this far edge. And I'm going to set z height to be at plus 0 0.02. I'm going to tell it to move Z down. And it's complaining that I got a touch off first. So I will just do a go to location. I'll uh, uncheck XY. I'm going to tell it to go to 0 0.025 and Z. And I'm just going to say move to location. So now I'm just above the table. I'm going to jog it into position roughly. I'm going to leave zero mode on, and I'm going to perform an X hit to set that zero. And these windows being stuck on top all the time is a problem. So I'm going to turn that off currently.
There we go. All right, so X is set at zero right in this location here, as is Y. We're ready to start probing this part. Um, I'm going to use a, use approximately a X equals plus six as my bounds. So I'm going to tell it to go to X plus 6.2 and not move down in Z and we'll say move. And what it did is it moved up to the, what I have set for Z safe height. And I should not have had return Z to start position set, but that's okay. It's a pro move at the end, so it went down and touched and stopped. So I'll just lift lift up a little bit here. So I'm at Y equals zero right on the center line at 6.2. And Z is at an arbitrary number. I just jogged it up. So to get started uh, recording data, the first thing I'm going to do is create a layer called center line. Give it a color. Color doesn't mean anything here. That's for when you get into CAD. So we've got center line as being active. We're going to want to do a perimeter probing operation in the XZ. Um, we're starting at plus X. I'm going to tell it to go in a reverse direction with the first hit being straight down at 270. And we are ready to record our data. So I've got my step over back off and the probe distance set to uh, values I like for what I'm doing here. Um, again, you can go finer or coarser. So I'm just going to say go. Now, if we look here, we'll start seeing it's collecting the XZ profile along the center line of this part. So I'm just going to manually stop it using the abort probe cycle button once I get down off of the part onto the table. And uh, the viewing window here gives a good representation of where the origin we set is, zero, zero. There, we've got a little bit of the table, and I'm just going to say stop. All right, so the next thing we'll want to do as far as a strategy of collecting the surface data is to probably grab another XZ and a plus and a minus side of the, the center line just so that we can kind of map out the surface shape with more detail than just the one center line. Um, So what I'll do is I'll tell it to go and move to a location of y equals plus 1. And let's not uh, return to our z start position. We're just going to leave it there. We won't even use a safe z. We're just going to move up in y1. So we're still at the same location, roughly. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to travel in the forward direction here. So we'll click forwards. Again, the first hit has to be straight down at 270. Let's put this on a new layer that's called uh, XZ1. Give it a different color so we can see it. And we just hit start and let it go.
And we confused the routine just enough, so I'm going to jog it slightly and tell it to restart. So we're just behind the part, and it's trying to go in roughly that direction. And we got stuck there again. But we've basically got enough data here. We'll just aim it straight down, grab a few more points. And we'll abort that. I'm just going to slide it over a little more. And let's go to y equals 0.5. And let's add a new layer called XZ.5. And again, we're going to go straight down first, but now we're going to go reverse again because we're at a positive X and we want to go back towards zero. So you can kind of see how the profiles starting to form and take shape into something you recognize. And we're getting back onto the table here. And I'm just going to grab a couple more points. Quite sure why we keep hanging up here. And we'll abort it. So we've got a couple of surfaces there. Let's go back and uh, go to Y1. X 6.2 and we'll start doing some uh, profiles in the YZ direction. And I'm just going to manually jog it straight down and get it close. So now we're going to go to a YZ surface. We're starting at a plus Y heading minus. So I'm going to keep it on reverse. And what I'm going to do here is jog it just a little bit closer to the parts. And now that we're here, we're going to set it to go straight down. We need to do a new layer. Let's call this YZ 6.2, give it a blue color, and hit go. So now what you can see is we're constructing the wireframe geometry in, in so far the XZ and the YZ planes basically creating cross-sectional views of the part in a wireframe manner. And we'll abort that. So now we'll just uh, lift that thing up off the table a little bit. We're going to go to uh, make a move to five. Let's create a new layer called YZ5. Give 
get another color. And again, I like using, the, I'll say, the distance of where the plane is at so that it'll make sense when I'm working in uh, something like uh, Fusion 360 as to creating new planes and dropping stuff in. So again, we're going to switch this to forwards because we're going to go from a, a negative Y to a plus Y now. Probe it straight down. So you can see how we're crawling up over the part, creating another wire frame at a different cross section. And why did we have a problem there? I'm not quite sure. But our part is heading positive Y. I need to go approximate that angle. So there we're gonna we'll have a little gap in our data here, but that's not a problem. Why am I having so much troubles here? I think my probe distance is set too short and I keep missing. Let's set this to point one seven. And so we're coming around the part. I wanna do kind of a negative angle like that so we'll have another gap in it and we're on the table again I'll hit abort so now we're gonna go to X4 move it to the location uh, going straight down now we're going reverse again Let's create a new layer, YZ4, give it another nifty color, and let's start that. All right, we're on the table. I'm going to hit abort. I'm going to jog over just a little bit so I know I'll clear. And so now I'm going to just uh, continue collecting data in exactly the same manner, except I'm going to quit talking while I do it. And uh, we'll come back later when we're ready to do the XZ profile. And that was my mistake. So what you didn't see in the camera is there's a one of my uh, mounting holes in the table. I just probed into it and it didn't stop. So that was my bad. And uh, I just crunched the probe down a little bit, but I think we're okay. What I'm going to do to rectify the situation is I should not have lost any X, Y position, but I think I lost steps in Z. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to retouch the table. Let's go back to the basic probing and we're just going to set Z again. And we're going to turn that back off. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to start on this side here at X equals two. Go back to my perimeter probing in the YZ. And make sure we probe straight down to start. And I think I'm good. Let's try this again. Oops. One more mistake there. I forgot to flip the direction. Let's try this again. There we go. Let's 
So you can see every time I start and stop, I get a little broken piece of data that we can clean up in CAD later. It's not a big deal. And it looks like I picked up back on Z OK, so things are at the right height. So no harm, no fall. Just taking a little extra time screwing up. And now I'm coming down to that hole that tripped me up before, so I'm going to hit a bort before I hit the table and drop into that hole. So now we're going to go and do uh, x equals 1 as a new location. And we're going to go reverse direction. Let's create a new layer. yz1. And let's do this again. And now we're on the table. I'll hit abort. And so for the last bit, it'll be basically running right along its edge at the origin. So um, what I'm going to do for that part of the data is let's do an XY probe. Right now we're at Z is basically slightly into the table because my table is not perfectly flat here. And we stopped. All right, we got jog safe probing stuck on is the problem here. I'll just flip that off a second. Lift that up. All right, so now let's move to a Z of uh, 0.25. And what we're going to do is go around the XY plane. So an XY perimeter, if you look at this, it goes around the part in a counterclockwise direction. So if I start right here, it's going to head this way, which isn't quite what I want to do. I'm going to manually jog myself around the part. And I'm going to start roughly here, just at the, the end of the part. And now so we're in, in a position that's just the positive Y of the part. So my first probe will be, again, 270 towards negative Y. And uh, we're going to go ahead and collect this data at Z equals 25 thou above the table. And I've got Z not set, so it's going to actually record that height. So we just say go. And let's get our uh, windows back here. That is a problem with Probit, is if you uh, leave the window while it's probing, it will stop. So I'm going to just restart it now that I got my windows back. So now if we look at it from above, we can see we're tracing it around the XY profile and so if you're if you're wondering why uh, when uh, you uh, lose focus of the windows it quits probing it's because uh, probe is using a kind of a, a little bit of a hack using the jog safe probing that you see and see it provides to, to actually do all the probing moves instead of g31 so it it's actually tied to uh, doing jog moves every time. And so UCNC has a, a safety feature where if, if a window loses focus, it, it quits jogging and that's what stops it. Yeah, and I see uh, one mistake I made here is I'm still collecting this data into the YZ1 profile Ideally, I would have put that into a different uh, layer. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's just uh, 
it'd be a little bit more work to pick all this data out and the CAD program being on a, a layer I didn't intend for it to be. And so now I'm going to abort this probing because uh, as I get around the part then, I'm, I'm just bumping the top of the uh, probe tip and I'm not really catching the ball end of the probe tip. It's because the part has a gap underneath it. So I'm going to do another XY profile at a higher elevation. So I'm going to jog up. I'm going to go ahead and move to X 6.2 and Y equals 1. And then when I get over there, I'm going to tell it to go to Z.3. And it decided to go back to its original height of 20 thou. But, uh, so now we're at uh, 0 0.3, 6.2, and 1. We're going to do another uh, probe in the minus y direction. And this time I'm going to remember to make a new layer called uh, xy 0.3. And let's give it another different color here, a nice orange. And let's go. So if we zoom out here, we can see where we are in relation to the whole uh, part. And for this profile, we're going to let it run all the way around the part and catch back over to 6.2, roughly, on the opposite side. So I'll, I'll quit talking here, and uh, I'll speed up the video so that we don't just sit here and watch it go forever but right now it's it's probing real-time speed and I'll, I'll speed it up to get through this all right we're coming up on the end of the part we're over at 6.2 again I'm just going to abort that, uh, zoom in, take a look. Um, over here, uh, I clicked off the windows again. I was looking at something else, and I screwed up the probing. So there's some junk data right there, but we'll just take care of that in the CAD. So um, this should give you an idea of, of what's been collected as a 3D wire frame. Again, all these probe data sets are individual line and point sets that are on individual layers that can be brought in. Um, so let's take a break here. I'll fire up Fusion. Um, first thing we better for sure do is save this. So I did a prior run before. We'll save this one as spatula test 2. And uh, we've got our part saved. Uh, let's go ahead and close out a probe it. And we'll close UC and C. All right, welcome back again. Uh, so I'm still sitting out at the shop computer, but I did fire up uh, Fusion 360 just to uh, show the file we just collected. So the first thing you want to do is do an insert of a DXF. Again, we're going to dump it onto the XY plane. Um, I'm going to tell it we want one sketch per layer. If you recall, we uh, recorded a whole lot of layers for different sections. Then we're going to go find our file. Uh, the one I just recorded here is spatula test 2. And it chugs a little bit, and there's our data. So um, the only bummer about Fusion 360 is you lose all the individual colors. But all, all that data is recorded still on individual um, layers. It's just not colorized per all the different layers. You can see they've all transferred in here. All the layer names we provided everything before. So we just say OK. And uh, we've got the data here. 
So this will conclude, I'll say, part one of the reverse engineering of a, a part like this. Um, this was how to set up, you probe it and you CNC uh, set up origins and collect the data. And then in part two, um, we'll play around in Fusion 360 here and create some surfaces off this. You can see kind of what you can do with this wireframe data we collected to uh, um, create a part that then you can uh, go and machine off of and create G-code and whatnot. So again, all this data here, if you highlight it, it's all individual point and line elements. Um, so for the sake of creating new surfaces, you'll want to do stuff like uh, doing a loft and sweep and other types of uh, uh, operations in Fusion or whatever CAD program you use to, to create these surfaces again. So um, hope you found this useful. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you got any questions or suggestions on how to do any other types of probing operations. Thanks for watching.